Hey Zach, start my video, I'm tired. <laughs> ah, jeez. What's up and good evening guys. Welcome back to another video. Been on the road for 12 hours today. I was not expecting to film. However, here we are filming. A lot of you guys have been asking for an update on the 450. And this video is gonna be a doozy because not only are we gonna be showing the final completion of the 450 here, and we've got all kinds of parts and stuff, Zach's working on some stuff over there, um, but we are also going to be taking this on one heck of a test drive I do not recommend what we're about to do in this video. Let's get you guys caught up though real quick here. We've got Zach on the front. I hear some zip ties. That means we're getting close. Mm -hmm. How are things going, buddy? Yeah, we don't want to mishap like the, the BBB. <laughs> lose a wheel speed sensor and it goes in lint mode. Once this truck is done, we are going to be driving this thing in this video all the way out from Southern California to Southern Utah to go visit our friends over at Flog Industries and enjoy our time over at Flog Fest, which is my personal favorite truck show. This thing's literally gonna go from like the last little bits, parts getting bolted on it to its maiden voyage all the way to Utah. Is this a good idea, Zach? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's called a shakedown. <laughs> this is quite the shakedown. <laughs> Just do me a favor and triple torque all the bolts, all right? So a couple of things that are getting done. Um, Zach had to have some spacers made for the front steering setup. I'll show you those in a second. Shout out to the homie Cowboy for uh, getting those done on a lathe for us. Then we've removed the four wheel drive valence, which why that thing has to be as big as it is, I have no idea. But I also don't own a wind tunnel, nor have I ever been one, so there's probably a reason. Now we are replacing it though with this package right here. A tremor valence in it because according to the old interwebs, the tremors have the like lowest profile valence of all the Ford pick em up trucks. We're gonna find out right now. Hopefully I got the right one. Otherwise we're rolling without a valence because that thing is ugly. Oh, I would say this is pretty slim line there. Oh, we got about two inches there. See like why can't they just come from the factory with this? Versus this friggin' big ol' ugly thing. I ain't gonna get one for my bumper up there. Just enough to hide the bolt holes. That's all we need. Four wheel drive? Well, I guess you can't even say that because the tremor's four wheel drive too. I don't understand it. I don't get it so there's three versions that I know of. There's a four wheel drive, the two wheel drive, which is smaller, and then I guess the tremor, which is the smallest. So honestly, this bumper looks good with no valence on it at all when you're at like, like that height. But if you come down here, you can see you got a bunch of bolts and clips and all kinds of stuff that you see. So literally this thing is just enough to hide those. I mean, it looks great from here. Now there's still a little bit of painting to do on the truck. We've got to paint pretty much uh, everywhere that Zach had to weld, the brackets and all that. And then these sway bar end links, they uh, kind of extend here. We're gonna give these a nice little rattle pan job with the roll bar chassis paint. Vroom, 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 vroom. You like it? Going up. If you guys have seen some of the videos of this going on online, on the old interwebs, on the old Instagram, um, we have not adjusted and tightened the bumper yet. Just one of the things we haven't done. So on tonight's list of 43 things we gotta do, one of which is get the bumper nice and aligned and tightened back down. Trying to film over here, you know. Zach always making a ruckus. So, getting the bed bolts tightened down. Uh, got a little covered in paint here, but we're touching up all the spots that were welded for this bracket on the frame there. That way we don't have any rust. And again, Zach's up here in the bed, getting all the bed bolts tightened back down. You can see where the uh, new <laughs> the new bed step height here is uh, a little under a little under waist height for me. Well, hold on, Zach. We got the. Yeah, we just gotta use the handle, man. <laughs> That's the right height, right there. Yeah. Oh, dude. Perfect. <laughs> oh, we got this. Oh, yeah. Grinding out here with the uh, hard hitting tasks. So, we gotta mount the airlift controller, and we've got this mob arbor mount that comes with it from Kelderman. It's actually Kelderman branded. You can see the little, little Kelderman logo on there, but it's from Mob Armor. So we've got, I kind of put that on, you know, I didn't realize <laughs> that was a separate piece, but she's magneted on there. That's just double-sided taped on. And then we just double-sided tape this booger onto the back of the controller here. And then it'll live right there, which is like perfect while you're driving. You can still see it and get to it. This thing also has a Bluetooth app yeah, for your phone. Say that's what your phone's for. Yeah. And it's actually a good one. Not like 
the crap they use no, to fight to like link up. Yeah, it's kind of better than controller. The controller got to push like too many times well, to unlock gotta, it. Yeah, I could change that, but oh. it's so if you hit a bump and you're trying to adjust it, you don't just like dump one corner of the truck. All right, Zach, my work here is done. I like it. Look at that. Everything. <laughs> you jerk. I mean, you watched me pressing the buttons. You could have said, "Don't do that." Well, I'm not that kind of dad. <laughs> well, you should have been. We're on a deadline now. We ain't got time to redo nothing. Is that a good fit? Yeah. All right. So, those little bushings that Cowboy made for us go right there and right there to make up the distance. Next step, we got to make sure the axles are squared up with each other in the frame. So, uh, we're going to use tape measure. We're going to do some stuff the old school way. Here you go, Zach. You get the smart end. I'll hold the dumb end of the tape. <laughs> You're the one that reads the numbers all day. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that fit right there. So we're going to pull from the same point on the rear axle on both sides here, and then we're going to measure crossways and make sure everything's pretty squared up with each other. I'm happy. One seventy nine and a quarter. All right, right about there, good buddy. One seventy nine and about a quarter. One seventy nine about a quarter. Zach's doubting himself right now that all these measurements just came back perfect, but they all came back perfect. When you're good, you're good, buddy. Just accept it. Yeah, but I know better. <laughs> I mean, a tape measure doesn't lie, you know. Now we've moved on to tightening up the link bars. Um, you know, Zach's letting me do this, so we got the old big impact there. We've gotten pretty much all the ones that we can reach, like these bolts and this bracket, but this booger right here, we've got this shock bracket right there that's in the way, so we can't get the impact on this side. And then we got the front div on this side, so yeah. This one's gonna be a double wrench do -si do by hand here to get this one tight. Uh, uh, all the cowbell. What the heck is this thing? So this is, one of them is to hold the bolt side. Well, I figured that out. And then if that one fits on the nut that's on there, that one's to tighten it. Okay. And then when you get tight enough, you put this on there. Oh, was that? That's the multiplier? And it, and it makes it a super long wrench. Okay, okay. I like so the multiplier. And then if that doesn't work, we can put the big old long wrench on it. <laughs> Quarter turn at a time, buddy. We're going to get her. All right. I like how this lock nut, you know, is extra tight. All right. Get it tighter. What could go wrong with this contraption? I feel like that. The... Yeah, you're gonna wanna flip, flip, yeah, wanna flip the handle around. Uh, hey, hey, hey! I haven't slept much. <laughs> Just give me a minute. All right. So we know I, I don't do good in this, but this is the shock. <laughs> getting the shock in position all Come over. Come on, here. use those pectorals. They ain't, they ain't there anymore. <laughs> then Zach walked over and was like, here's your next wrench. <laughs> Alright, I like that. I like that. Feel much better. See how it just stopped? Yep. So this is as far as we're getting tonight. Tomorrow we got the last couple little things to put on this thing. Then we get to take it on some test drives. And it's really the final day we have to get this thing ready for our trip to Utah. Uh, because then it's got to go to Genesis Detailing, which they don't know that yet, so we're going to surprise them in this video. <laughs> and be like, hey, a little, little last minute detail on this bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, we will see you guys tomorrow afternoon, evening. Okay, y'all. Another night. Another night of working on the old F450 here. Yeah. Pretty much our last night. Zach's drilling out the holes a little bit bigger here on the sway bar mounts. Because well, we kind of had a DIY hardware kit that we assembled. Yeah. A little big, bolts are a little big. Okay, Zach says bigger is better. We gotta drill these out too, or are they gonna fit in these? They should fit. Okay, well they should, all right. We get some of this super sweet grease here. We're gonna, we're gonna grease her up. And a little bit of this right here. Then we're just gonna make all kinds of a mess. We did some measuring, we're gonna have to call an audible here. The holes seem to be drilled at the wrong spot. They're not wide enough apart, so. We're gonna bolt up the fronts here. Then uh, mark the rears. You can see we're about almost like a half, actually three quarters of an inch or so off. So we're gonna re-drill the rears and then it'll maybe work. Sway bar is on, the new holes worked, everything's great. Uh, we do have one issue though, and that is we are missing the little billet adapters that go on the back that screw in here for the plastic caps to kind of press onto. 
We have 10 of them, we need 20 of them. And we don't know if we had the box and we lost the box or if the box never came, but American Force was pretty freaking good on sending everything. So there's a chance we lost it, I don't know. Either way, uh, looks like we're gonna be rolling to Utah with uh, five on each. So now Zach's getting the front ride height sensors put on. Now, is this like the final step right here? Uh oh. Ride height sensor is on, so basically all it is is there's this little little thing right there. This almost looks like a servo, kind of. This connects to the link bars down there, and then this basically tells the computer um, where the height is. So obviously we have to kind of set the presets on there, but that's what it uses to base the presets off of our desired ride heights, whether that be all the way up, all the way down. Um, you know, our driving height, cool little system there. My Denali has something very similar in the rear. It's probably the exact same system, um, but very helpful because it is almost impossible to tell when you're in these vehicles if you're level or not. Okay guys, well, we have done pretty much all of our final checks going around, making sure everything that we could find to tighten has been tightened. We think we got it all, we're not sure. Zach's gonna go take it out right now for a test drive. It's getting late, it's probably not the best time to do a test drive, but it's really all the time that we have. Uh, it's 11-11. You know, I thought I was gonna be worried about the SEMA crunch, but we have the vlog fest crunch going on right now, which I think is worse than the SEMA crunch. I'm so excited to drive this thing. It's a freaking beast. Zach's gonna do a couple test pulls up and down the street, see if anything pulls weird or anything, because again, we're gonna go off of Zach aligning it here in the shop with the old tape measures and all kinds of stuff versus taking it to alignment shop. Um, Zach's very, very, very good at alignments. And he is back from his test drive. What are we thinking? Tight and scary, it's angled really. <laughs> okay. Get it up to like 90, because that's yeah, allegedly what- It's so stiff that you hit the bump and you feel it on the wheel. You don't really, it doesn't- Oh. <laughs> it feels pretty good. Right. Now, Zach had to pull away from the shop because all of this back alleyways, all kinds of pitched, all, a bunch of different weird ways. And well, we need to start setting some ride heights and get things kind of level and looking level. So we're out on the street right here, which is kind of flat. I, I feel like it slopes just a little bit that way, but it's not too bad. This is a flat enough surface for us to kind of gauge and look. Now he's going through, doing all the calibration, getting the controller set up. Look at how big this thing is, look at this. Look at this. Not too many trucks that I, I can almost walk under the mirror, almost. Oh, hold on, it's only got like 50 pounds in the back too. Oh, it'll go up higher? Oh, that's it, that's it, all right. Oh, oh, if I had a bum leg, I could walk under this mirror. Okay, the system is all calibrated. Zach's gonna do a little bit more test driving it right now, and I will see you guys in the morning. It is after midnight. It's been a lot of long, <laughs> it's been a lot of late nights this month, and it's only gonna get worse going into next month with having to get the Bronco ready for SEMA, but that's what we signed up for. Well, last night ended up being a super late night. We still don't think we have the truck fully dialed in, but it was like 2 a.m. and we're like, we just gotta, we just gotta call it quits for the night, so. I'm gonna take this thing on its first maiden voyage that I've had on the freeway. Zach took it just on, you know, exit to exit last night. Just quick little jaunts on the freeway to see how it rode. We also have a horrible part of the freeway right here where we're at. So I'm gonna take it on a little bit of a mission today. We're gonna go to Genesis Detail and get it dialed in, get the truck all cleaned up. But uh, this will be my first run on the freeway with it, and we'll see. We'll see how this thing rides and if we're gonna commit to a. Uh, <laughs> thousand plus mile road trip here. But first we have to inch her out of the shop here and it is a tight squeeze on both sides. Here goes nothing guys. Now I have never driven a fully air ride front and rear vehicle, um, especially on the freeway. So you guys know my Denali, it's air ride in the rear and it's a coilover setup in the front, but it's obviously an IFS suspension versus a solid axle like the 450 is here. So the only way to really do air ride in the front of my Denali would have been to solid axle swap it, um, which is why I never did it. And I gotta say, that truck rides like a dream. Like, I'm kinda glad I didn't, other than the fact that the front can't go up and down, but the freaking ride is perfect. This, on the other hand, um, it's, it's a much different feel. Like, you may notice the steering wheel, um, like, you are feeling everything in the steering wheel now. Me and Zach are not super happy with how we dialed it in yesterday, so we're gonna actually do some more tweaks today. This much steering wheel bounce, I mean, you can't really see it right now because we're on a good part of the road, but let's, let's go to, let's change lanes here. But you guys can kind of see how like, now she does drive straight, she doesn't pull left or right or anything like that, but you can see how the steering wheel is super reactive to basically any movement on the road. 
which then transfers through to you. So it might just be the nature of the beast, I don't know. Now I've been on the road for all of about, I don't know, five to 10 minutes here and I feel like I'm already used to it. So I think one of the things, um, if you guys notice when the air ride goes up and down, the steering wheel moves and the truck kind of pivots and that's just the nature of the beast with having air ride in the front. Any level lift I think is the only company that's really figured out how to keep all the geometry perfectly straight up and down so you'll see no steering wheel movement. So I'm assuming when we hit a bump, obviously the ride height's changing, the suspension's doing work, which is probably why the steering wheel is moving. But again, after driving it here for five or so minutes, I'm pretty comfortable in this truck now. Now I've gone ahead and reset the uh, MPG thing there. Obviously things are gonna be weird because we haven't recalibrated for the 40s, but we'll, uh, we'll do a little hand calculating on the way out to Flogfest. This thing's got a 42 gallon tank. My Denali has a 36 gallon tank and on 40s I can make it in one tank. So it's 500 something miles, I can make it on one tank. That truck just freaking does phenomenal for fuel economy. We'll see what this one does. I don't think we're gonna make it in 42 gallons, which is significantly more than my Denali has. So it's gonna be an expensive fuel trip. Now I know these apps aren't 100% accurate, but the Speedo is showing 50 miles an hour right now and the GPS app is showing 61 miles an hour. So give or take, 10, 11 miles an hour off until we get the uh, speedo all nice and corrected. So it's gonna be good to know for the trip to Utah because uh, last time we got pulled over for going just, just a hair over the speed limit. On a bright note though, this thing um, is not too wide in these lanes. That's one thing I was worried about was being too wide in the lanes there and like just having to constantly fight to keep it in the lanes, but it is not bad at all. And we are arriving at Genesis Detailing. Look at this, they got the ladder out already. They know, they know. What, sand car? Tire shine everywhere. Oh, tire shine the whole thing? Whole tire. You could do this one. Really? Well, maybe. I don't know. Right. I don't know. Hold on. I, I'm going to rethink that. What's up, buddy? What up? Oh, dude, just in time? What'd oh, you make me? I was chicken. Chicken nuggets? Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, buddy? How are you? I'm well. What do we got going on here? No. Oh, desert prep. Okay. I coded two years ago. Nice. Doing this annual maintenance for it. For it's the ideal height to clean wheel wells. <laughs> this is much needed, guys. This thing has been in the shop for months. It's covered in all kinds of dust and crap from the shop. It needs a lot of love right now. A lot of love. Now, while this truck hasn't been um, outside in the elements and all that, it has been in our shop for a long time. And we've been doing a lot of cutting and grinding and welding and all that. So. Nick went ahead and sprayed a, uh, what is it, iron remover, decon, iron, what do you call it? Decon. Decon, iron, iron decon. remover. You can see it working right now. We're just working into the paint. All that purple is the iron deposits. All right, Jacob. Jacob, we're trying to film over here. Oh, screw He's me. the only one trying to work. So yeah, you can see anywhere that there's purple right there, that is the iron in the paint. We're sitting on top of the paint. We're bringing it out, we're right? Working it in, massaging the paint. All right, all right. Trying to remove it. And you can see, like, see that little piece right here? Yep. That's iron. Gotcha. So. Those deposits are the goal to remove from sitting, cutting. Yeah, right. there it is. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see in the bumper, pretty much any flat surface where like the iron dust and stuff from the metal sits from the shop is gonna be uh, covered in it. Away, like... There you go. Yep, yep, yep. Nick got rid of it. Yeah, look at the look at the hood. See all the purple. All the purple. Look at this. Look at the spot of the bumper right here. Purple, purple, purple. Look at this thing, all nice and polished up. Where's my man? Where's my man? Where's my man? Where's my man? No, where's my other man? Where's my other man? My other man. Take a look. Look at this. Look how shiny, pristine. Look at that, buddy. It needs a little more light, but I mean, no. just for you. Just take our word for tips, it, right? Tips are all clean. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, I, there's a lot I can do with a clean tip. You're telling me. <laughs> Always the best over here at Genesis Detailing. Make sure you guys hit them up. Apparently not just cars, trucks, SUVs, sand rails, whatever you need done. I know they got the best. season. Give us a call. We got you. Get you dialed in for the season. I don't know if you guys could see it, um, but there's a trucker next to us, got his phone out. It's the first time this truck's been like out in the public eye. I've gotten a ton of awesome responses, especially from truckers. There was a hot shot trucker earlier. He was super excited to see the truck, but I kind of want to pull up next to these guys. I want to see what the height difference is. Uh, and granted, we're at ride height. We're not all the way up, but to see what we're like next to a uh, next to a semi truck. Here's a good height difference test right here. We got us a uh, semi next to us. And we're, we're about window level. Their windows are a little bit higher. I mean, I bet if we aired up, we would be pretty window to window there, but I can give you guys kind of an idea. Let's see, I know it's hard to tell on camera. Let's see, get a little closer. Mirror to mirror, let's go down about window to window height. If you have never driven a lifted truck, I know some of them look ridiculous and the bigger they are, the more ridiculous they look, but when you are sitting in traffic, 
like we are right now in bumper to bumper traffic being able to see above the car in front of you and see what's coming up ahead of you you will never want to be in a lower vehicle once you've ever been in a lifted truck like it's just so much nicer look at this we've got a full-size yukon in front of us we can clearly see over the roof of it and see what's coming up ahead if somebody cuts him off like we have advanced notice you know to get on the brakes versus if you're like staring at the back of a vehicle you have no clue what's going on ahead of them and if they got to slam on the brakes you're going to be the last one to find out well we are back in the shop finishing up the night here we got to get the f450 all loaded up with the work for it booth zach's doing some last minute uh yeah. it's never good when the welders out last minute but zach's gonna be doing some little last minute work here yeah, well you know when you break stuff off in holes when he breaks up off in holes, you gotta get the welder out. It's gonna be a long night for us. Tomorrow, we hit the road. Today is the big day. We are heavily, heavily loaded down here. We got all of our merch, we got our booth. Ho! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey. What? I'll see Travis. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. So unfortunately, we're not rolling with all the homies this year. Uh, a lot of them were busy and just couldn't go, so we're kind of flying solo with the West Coast homies, but we're meeting up with a lot of the East Coast homies, so this should be cool. This is the first year a lot of them are coming out to Clogfest, so let's jump on the road here. Let's see how the old 450 does. Fingers crossed we make it with no issues. Okay, we have made it to our first fuel stop here. Um, we're at about a half a tank, but I want to top it off right now. I mean, I've been on the road for about an hour and a half. I'm gonna get up underneath here, check and make sure everything is tight. Zach marked most of the bolts, so we should be able to see if any of the bolts have moved or anything's kind of backed its way out. So far though, this trip's going pretty good. The truck seems to be riding fine. The steering wheel still does have, you know, I don't know if it's just something I gotta get used to, but it's not. It's not bad to deal with. Let's check up underneath here. Everything looking good, looking tight. My checks are complete. We are looking good. Let's see, 140 bucks for 21 and a half gallons there. Well, we have made our stop number two. Uh, let's see, we burned a little less than a full tank, so we're back to add another half tank here. Uh, just 300 miles is about what we've gotten in about a full tank, so I think our uh, fuel economy is drastically reduced there. We, uh, the reason we stopped is because, well, this year stuff was a little bit low in the truck. I don't know if the uh, prep works is a quality diesel exhaust fluid or not. I think we have enough in there to make it to Utah. We're about an hour and a half away. I'm gonna keep this on me just in case and then, uh, you know, do a little research on it and or buy a higher quality diesel exhaust fluid. I don't know, I haven't had to use this stuff in years. So I'm still uh, relearning the diesel exhaust fluid world. Yeah, we ain't got a whole lot of room. Alrighty guys, we are coming into Utah finally. You can see the sun is setting. Now the timer starts. How long until we get pulled over? I think we've been pulled over every single time, just about every single time we've ever come to uh, Flogfest. The uh, guys in St. George, Utah, the cops uh, do not like lifted trucks. So here's to hoping for the best. I am happy to say y'all, we are here. The truck made it. Apparently we're a little bit late because the fairgrounds are closed right now. But uh, Kev from Flog is coming over to open it up for us so we can unload this truck because we got a lot of crap that we got to unload here. But man, am I freaking stoked to finally be here. It was a long trip. This is two back-to-back -back weekends for me. Last week I went up to Sacramento. That was like a nine-ish hour drive. 12 hours on the way back just made a couple of stops. And today I think it took us about eight hours to get here, which is, uh, yeah, it's a lot of seat time. It's more seat time than I like. All you guys that travel all across the country for shows and stuff, I don't know how you guys do it, man. It is. Uh, I don't know if that's the life for me. But the truck did great. Once we started getting out of California, we got on nicer and smoother roads. You know, obviously the steering wheel, feeling everything in the road became less of a thing. Um, once we get back after this show, you know, again, we didn't really have a ton of time to like get in there and, and start to diagnose that. And we didn't want to make it worse. Um, so it was drivable. It was comfortable enough. Zach's like, just take it. Once it comes back, we'll tweak it and see if like we can get rid of that. Or again, that might just be the way these things are supposed to ride. I don't know. I've never driven a truck with air right in the front. Oh, easy, easy day. What's up, brother? Yo, what's going on? It's only been a year. Well, it's actually, has it been a year? No, you guys came down. It's been like less it's than a year. Was that last year or the year before that we came down? I feel like there was a two-year like gap that doesn't count anymore. It feels like so long. Yeah. Everybody, Kev from Flog puts hey on, you know, one half of putting on the beautiful masterpiece of today, tomorrow. The sexy the half. There you go. Nice. 
<laughs> you obviously know I'm kidding. But... Well, let us in, man. So, so I have the keys to this mansion. All right. I mean, we might as well just spend the night here. At this point, it'd probably air conditioning or yeah, it'd be a little nice. cheaper, you know. All righty, y'all. We've made the cut. We get into the club here. I never thought I'd be driving a Ford. It's just, you know, this one's I, not mine. This one's not mine. I, I know, but I never thought you'd be driving a Ford. <laughs> it's the one show I look forward to all year, guys. Like, we used to go to a lot more in, in like, the SoCal area, but they all started becoming, like, the same, like, monotonous and boring. Um, and it's just, it's, it's not fun. So, Vlog Fest is the one show that I actually, like, I'm excited to travel for. And uh, it's going to be, it's going to be wild, huh? It'll be a lot of fun. Sometimes we make it a little too wild. <laughs> Wait, there's a few things we can't talk about. <laughs> yeah, but, we probably uh, <laughs> should. I noticed there was a no uh, no pit bikes in the building rule. Is that because of us? There's also no burnouts in the building rule. <laughs> well, I don't know who's Yeah, we, we won't talk about who did that. <laughs> well, guys, I thought we were rolling pretty big, and then uh, this guy's rolling in to set up his booth. He's got it all stacked away inside of his little uh, compartments down below. Let's go get a little sneak peek. I see some pretty cool vehicles in here. We got a pretty sick H2 Hummer, um, which is crazy because back in the day when these things came out, there weren't that many sick ones, but now everybody's kind of stepping the game up on these. I know Lacey's is pretty dope that she's got. This thing is uh, pretty clean. Look at that full frame off, powder coated candy red frame. Looking good, looking good. We got a pre-runner over here. What we got over here? We got a GMC on some Air Ride. What we got? What kind of setup we got going on here? It looks like a, uh, is that a Kelderman? It looks like a Kelderman. Running the bank stiff cover. And then this freaking monster, this thing is massive. Look at this thing. This is like, I feel like the next level. Like maybe at some point we need to go this route with the next build and do like full cradle four link. It's one thing I've never done on a build just because there's so much involved in finding a good builder. Okay guys, well we are gonna go to our Airbnb tonight and uh, Call it quits. We gotta be up super, super early. We got the homies showing up at like 3 a.m. We gotta help them get the trailers parked, maybe unloaded, I don't know. It's already nine o'clock at night. We gotta be back up at 3 a.m. And then, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a long day tomorrow. So, super stoked on the truck. Huge thank you to Zach for getting this thing built. Um, huge thank you to Kelderman. A huge thank you to American Force Custom Offsets. This truck is freaking rad. I'm um, excited to get some more seat time in it. Well, well, maybe not on this trip, but over time. And then I know everybody's gonna say, you haven't given it to your dad yet. No, when we get back from this trip, get a few things dialed in, then we're finally gonna hand over the keys to Papa Rhino, and he will be able to enjoy his big old monster truck. And I think he's really gonna love it because this thing gets so much attention driving down the road. We probably had 20, 30 people on the trip. Um, stop, give thumbs up, take pictures. Uh, so it's been super rad. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, okay, a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best, I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.